quite a lot of excitement here in Axelheim. Uh, that's just what I was thinking. Yeah, it's rather provincial, but things are like that in the Far East. We'd better stay together. In spite of what you see, the situation in the Far East is rather disturbing. There's an undercurrent of hatred for their present ruler, in spite of the fact that they've done everything to quiet them. Gigantic parades, bazaars, exhibitions in the elephant barns. There's a revolution in the army, and trouble between the natives and foreigners like us might just set it off. James, I don't think we should stay here. There's trouble brewing. Oh, don't worry. Whenever the natives are nervous, they always hold a parade to take their minds off their troubles. I told you we shouldn't come here in the first place. No matter what happens, I will not leave till I find out what happened to Greg. I know how you feel, Jean. But the English and Americans are not very popular here just now. Oh, look. There's a hotel where Greg stayed. I don't know how long we're going to stay here. Colonel Jones and I are looking for someone. Um, uh, perhaps uh, you can help us. Yes, Miss Preston. A young man, an American, about 25 years of age. Greg Jones, Colonel Jones's son. We know he left you on a safari about a month ago and didn't return. Madam, I wish I could give some help. There are many safaris leave from here. Searching for a man in a country of this size, why, it's like looking for a needle in the haystack. Wayne, we've discussed this before, and we'll keep on searching until we find that needle. Notice that little native girl? Uh, yes, I thought she seemed particularly interested. But that's just what I was thinking. Room 207-211-214, on your left. Thank you. Yes. Sahib. There's a young lady at a party here. Seeking Craig Jones. Detain the party. Tandra, you are looking for a white man with lost safari? Why, yes, Tandra, I am. I'm looking for the man I'm engaged to marry, Greg Jones. Moyo told me of lost safari and lone white man. What? My husband with many safaris. Last time. have been Greg's safari. Would you bring your husband here so I could question him? No, ma'am. Too much danger. Here. I think I can make it worth your while. because the people take such a keen interest in them. It's like baseball or football in our country. The tug of war is arranged between two bull elephants and the natives bet high on the outcome. Events like this are designed to keep their minds off of more troublesome matters. I can't understand why that young fool Wayne insists on going to the marketplace at a time like this with all this unrest. Why did Wayne have to go to the marketplace to rest? I didn't say rest, I said unrest. Oh. You 
keep messing around until he gets us all into trouble. Oh, come in. This is Moya. How do you do? He will be glad to tell you what he can. Perhaps you have a picture of the young man you are looking for. Why, yes, I have. He not in last safari, one before. They hunt elephant ivory, big tusks, you know, so high. They first go to sea town, then go to Kaibo in Africa. Listen, I tell you. A native has just been killed in room 207. You will notify the police at once. One side. Is Preston in a room? Yes, I. Thanks. Well, it's a lucky thing. No one heard that shot. What happened here? I don't know. But with all this native unrest, if the police ever get wind of this, there's going to be trouble. Their investigation may detain us here for a month. Oh, it's too late. The natives are rioting already. Now, Redford, come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> That's just what I was thinking. There's a clipper lying in a bay. If we hurry, we can make it. Oh, but if we run away now, it'll only make matters worse. They'll follow us. Let's risk that. Well, the man just said the great safari went on to Africa, and we can't afford to waste any more time here. Are you packed? Oh, yes, yes. Well, then hurry. We'll meet you down in the lobby. Yes, uh, hurry. Let's go. We were lucky to get out of the country without further trouble and to catch the clipper for Africa. We all felt encouraged as it seemed at last that we had picked up Greg's trail. After an uneventful flight, we landed in Africa and caught the river boat and headed for Kaibo. Checkmate, Professor. Checkmate. <laughs> You're wasting your time in this search, buoying yourself up with false hopes. Wayne, please. If Greg were alive, he'd have communicated with you by now. That is, if he wanted to. And if he's dead, he's buried long ago. We'll never find any trace of him. Wayne, it was your idea to come with us. Now, if you want to go back, go back. Find time to tell me that in the middle of nowhere, with alligators and lions and savages all around me. <laughs> well, what's so funny, Colonel? I think it was Horace Greeley who said there are times when it's more dangerous to go back than to go ahead. Well, I'm not Horace Greeley. I think we all should go back. Oh, well, now you know what that means, even on a trolley car. It means go ahead. <laughs> I just came from the commissioner's office, and he's going to help us all he can. But he won't allow us to go into the back country without a guide. And unfortunately, the only man available is Gary Lambert. And he hates women. He hates women, huh? Mm, he thinks they're a nuisance. Oh, he does, does he? Don't you worry, I'll take care of that. Shooting, huh, Jimmy? Nine out of ten. Here, put up this new target. Go on, Jim. Oh, hello, Commissioner. Oh, hello, Gary. Still at your target, eh? <laughs> well, I'm going to send you somewhere where you'll need that good marksmanship. There's another confounded party arriving, in, and you've got to help me with them. Well, I knew there was a catch to your visit, but I didn't think you were allowing any more expeditions to start out while the natives are so upset. Well, it's it's uh, orders from the home office. Besides, there's a, there's a girl with him. A girl, huh? Yes. Well, you can count me out. 
You mean to say you'd let another safari start out after what happened to the last one? Not just the point, Gotti. The man she's going to marry was with that last one, and she wants to find him. Now, look, Commissioner, you know I'd do anything I could for you. But you ought to know by now how I feel about women on safaris. They always want things impossible to get in the jungle. They're useless in emergencies. They're just added responsibilities. I know all that. Maybe if you just met this girl and talked to her, you might persuade her to give up the idea. I don't want to meet her. I've never met one yet that wasn't a blasted nuisance. Miss Jean Preston, the young lady I was telling you about. Mr. Gary Lambert. <laughs> well, Annie Oakley, when do we start? Alchemist. Did they know we were coming? Oh, uh, Professor. Hello, Mr. Lambert. Oh, hello. I've been looking for you. Is our safari ready? Yes, I've got the boys and the supplies all lined up. I certainly appreciate you going with us, even though you were against the whole idea. I understand you're having trouble getting a cook. Yes, I've been trying to get Gabby to go along with us. He's about the best cook in these parts, but I haven't been able to get a word in edgewise. Why don't you come over to the general store with me and we'll talk to him together? I'd love to. Fishers went sailing out into the west. Out into the west as the sun goes down. Each thought on the woman who loved him best, and the children stood watching them out of the town. For well, men must work, and women must weep. And there's little to earn and many to keep. Though the harbor bar be moaning. Three wives sat up in the lighthouse tower and they trimmed the lamp as the sun went down. They looked at the squall and they looked at the shower. And the night rack came rolling up ragged and brown. Three corpses lay out on the shining sand in the morning gleam as the town went down. And the women are weeping and wringing their hands for those who will never come back to the town. For men must work. And women must weep, and the sooner it's over, the sooner to sleep, and goodbye to the bar, and it's morning. Well, how about it, Gabby? You coming along as cook? Well, I don't know. But to take up my story from where I left off, now let me see. Oh, yeah. After she throws the fifth rolling pin at me, I figure she don't like me. If that's the way she wants it, that's okay by me. The very next day, I ship out on the Pearl of Cape Town. For five years, then, I'm the best doggone sea cook on the whole Cape Coast. <laughs> but everybody knows that, Gabby. That's why you're here. I never go ashore, though, never. So my wife don't catch me. <laughs> by and by, I hear she's run away with some no account from the inland country, far, far away. So I'm a free man. But I don't get married no more. Oh, no. Now I got a cook. A cook's cook. <laughs> so now you don't have any trouble. But I do. I do. That's just it. <laughs> well, but, Gabby, I don't see how that concerns you going with us. My cook. She don't like me to go away. She thinks I'm such a good boss. Why don't you tell her to get a girlfriend to stay with her until you get back? Tell her you'll bring her messages and gifts from her people. Well, that's a good idea. To tell the truth, I wouldn't mind a little trip myself. After all, if a cook is a cook, he's got to keep a cooking. <laughs> Supposing I talk to her, huh? That's a good idea. You go right ahead and talk to her. You'll find her in back. Okay. What's the matter with you, Gabby? You know Maddie can't speak English. Oh, it's just a little joke on the lady. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> good, good. I, I was looking for you, too, Gary. To tell you the truth, Gary, I had two reasons to urge her to go on this trip. It wasn't only that the home office ordered me to look after this party. What else? This fellow, Greg Jones, that Miss Preston is looking for, was sent out here on a mission. There's a contraband ring working somewhere in the back country, shipping out ivory. And it was his job to find and stop them. I see. We're just as anxious about this situation as the people who hold the concession. So you'll be doing me a great favor if you get on the track of Greg Jones. Or find out what happened to him. I'll see what I can do. Yes, sir. 
Jimmy, go get the commissioner a match. Here you are, Commissioner. Such a smart bird you got, Gary. <laughs> Now, you boys be careful of that stuff. I don't want it lost. I've had it a long time, and I need it. Polo, you be a good boy. Don't make a monkey out of yourself. Don't you fight with Jimmy. Hmm? Well, Gabby's got his equipment ready. How about you, Colonel? All ready. Commissioner, are you sure these maps will get us where we're going? Yes, yeah, sir. I suppose he's got to go along. The commissioner said quite definitely we can't go without him. Now, if he bothers you, you don't have to go. There's no reason for you to make this long, dangerous trek. If you go, I'm going to look after you. As you like. Goodbye, Commissioner. Goodbye, Gary, and have a nice trip. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Professor. Goodbye, Goodbye. 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 Bay isn't very high here. It'll take them two days to load our boats and get us ready for the safari. That, my dear, is the origin of all modern dancing. Try it sometime, Colonel. <laughs> <laughs> when their small children, long bamboo shoots are forced into their flesh, the more pain they can bear, the more they are respected and admired. Yes, but like many other beautiful things, it has its drawbacks. This is as far as we can go by boat. Oh, you mean this is the end of the line? You want a jungle. From here on, you've got it. Yeah. Under you and around you. Civilization was now far behind us. Nothing serious had happened since Moya was killed, but we sensed that we were coming closer and closer to danger. Simbala. Simbala. We're going deep into the jungle. We need 40 good boys and one good head man. Always I give you what you want. I send Tonga, my best head man. But first, we have welcome dances for you. Come now, you see. The chief is very proud of his tribesmen and likes to show them off. It wouldn't be good policy to offend him. And why a bar? interested in insects. But you find them in the strangest places. After the ceremony, the natives gathered in the marketplace where we bought the rest of our supplies, as we wouldn't reach another village until we'd arrived at our destination. Everyone, the 
Many big jobs to get party boy for you. They scared of voodoo. Voodoo? I thought you were all over that business, Tonga. Tongo no afraid for voodoo, but boy, plenty afraid. What's the voodoo this time? Just what are they afraid of? White woman. Well, I can't say as I blame them. Pretty white woman, but bad. She's queen of the she-devil. Very pretty, but good native is afraid from her. White goddess. Well, bless my soul, a white goddess in the jungle. A white goddess, huh? She-devils. <laughs> hmm. Hey, oh, no, you vomit. You vomit knocking down all my pots there. Now, who's going to pick them up, huh? Get in there, you. Uh... <laughs> That night, the natives danced the sacred fire dance to bring us good luck on our journey. Gary? Gary? Yes? Yeah? Well, Miss Preston. There's, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. The, these white women, Amazons, whatever you call them, Amazons? Uh -huh. You don't really believe there are such creatures out here in the jungle, do you? Well, I... Well, if it'll make you feel any better, we'll go see what Tonga has to say about it. Come on. Tonga, I want you to tell us all you know about the white she-devils in the jungle. Bad to talk. They know everything. They will do. Tonga, tell us what you know of the white she-devils. Speak. Long time. Long, long time. Big boat on the ocean, near mouth of river. Big water, high water. In big storm. Men try to get in boat. Captain no let them. Only women save. Women make camp in jungle. They she devil you find now. She devils, Amazon. Oh, I read that in Greek mythology. It sounds like a fairy tale. No, there's plenty of fact in what Tonga says. That part of the jungle holds plenty of terror for those boys, or they wouldn't act up as they do. Despite the warnings of Tonga about the white goddess. We started on our long trek, determined at all costs to bring our search to a successful conclusion. as if to warn us. He'll come back. He always does. He give me this. You look, you look. This is an American gold coin. Oh, that's Greg's. I gave it to him. Are you sure? Of course. He's worn it ever since I found it. See the date? 1921, his birthday. Yes, that's right. And there's a square he cut in it so he could wear it on his keychain. Bombo, are you afraid of me? Ask him where he found this. He say whitey man give it to him to bring to commissioner. Oh, I'm sure we're on the right trail now. I'm sure of it. Don't build your hopes too high, Jean. 
Tonga, we make camp here tonight. See you later. Night after night, as we made camp, our nerves were set on edge by a series of minor mishaps. It seemed as if an evil force were trying to impede our progress. You seem troubled about something. I didn't want to tell the others until I'd investigated further. Yes? This native boy confirms the voodoo that has our native carrier so badly frightened. I'm beginning to believe Then there it. is a white woman, a she-devil. Bombo says she's holding Greg prisoner. That puts me glad you know. But I'd rather it would have been anyone else but you. I didn't do it because I liked it. Thanks, anyway. Colonel, hmm? if my suspicions prove correct, I'll be able to tell you in the morning who's responsible for all our troubles. Well, what do you mean, Wade? Well, I'm convinced that someone in the outfit is making every effort possible to keep us from reaching Greg. Oh, that's nonsense. What could they have to gain? That's just it. I don't know. Well, who could it be, anyway? Not you or me, and certainly not Sheen. Couldn't be the professor here, or Gary. I don't know, but I'm going to find out. I know you'll think I'm running a fever when I tell you this. But that animal is wearing a collar around its neck. Oh, oh excuse me. I'm sorry I did that. I'm sorry you're sorry. After what you've just been through, I can't help feeling jittery. Well, that's all right, Jean. Don't let it upset you. I'm sorry I got you into this, really, I am. Don't blame yourself. I had other reasons for coming along other than seeing you through. You had? Mm-hmm. A little matter of a million dollars a year that the government is losing on revenue, on the exportation of ivory out of this district. You mean ivory runners? Well, we call it contraband. I knew Greg was here on some secret mission. Maybe it had something to do with this. It had. Someone has been taking ivory out of here for years. The commissioner and I thought that by using this safari as a cover-up, we might be able to put our finger on the guilty ones. I haven't been able to tell you so far because, well, I didn't know how far I could trust you. All the time I thought, well, I sort of... You sort of what? But you came on my account. When you left, you told me you were engaged to Greg. I am. So I naturally concluded that you were in love with him. You certainly wouldn't have started on this long search if you hadn't been. We grew up together. I've known him all my life. I've never even thought of marrying anyone else but Greg. Oh, I see. That doesn't mean I can't have friends, good friends. Like Wayne, for instance? Well, yes. Wayne's a friend. Is that the way he wants it? No, but I can't help that. I've made it quite clear to him many times that we could never be anything more. Even if I didn't love Greg, I couldn't care for Wayne. How about me, if you didn't love Greg? What a strange question. I do love Greg. But if you didn't? How can I tell? Things would be different. I... But you can't be sure about me. Why, I don't know. I've always thought Greg was the only one I could ever love that way or, or marry. I guess I had it fixed in my mind. 
Oh, you've got me so mixed up. Have I? Yes. That's what I'm trying to do. Good night, Gary. Good night, Jean. Have you seen Wayne this morning? Come to think of it, I haven't. Gary, last night Wayne told me he'd won the confidence of Bombo, who told him he knows exactly where to find the white woman's encampment. He promised to tell me the location this morning. What a time off to draw a map. Well, that's very strange, Jean. Bombo refused to confide even in Tonga, yet he agreed to guide us there. Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Tonga! Yes, one well. There's been a white man injured. Come on. Ethan Apupa. Man is there. Wayne. footprint was meant to look like a native's, but it was made by a white man. But surely that's impossible. How can you tell? Whoever made that print was accustomed to wearing shoes. What bothers me, as far as we know, the only white men within miles of here are in this camp. And one of them's a murderer. continued our journey, missing Wayne a hundred times a day. Tonight until the locusts have passed. This bad place for Camp Guana. This lion country. Anyhow, I think this is our best bet. Light fires tonight and keep a sharp lookout. Zudi, Zudi. Simba, 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 Simba. It did seem we were having more than our share of bad luck. We ran into swarms of locusts, were attacked by animals, and now we were in the lion country, the land of Simba. of disaster had taken hold of Bombo. He still strode at the head of the safari, but his courage and confidence were fast disappearing. to this white woman he spoke of. He alone had the directions. The day he confided those directions to Wayne, Wayne was killed. Evidently by a white man. Now Bombo is gone and we have those footprints again. Gary, it can't be much further. I don't know that, but I feel we're pretty close to what we're looking for. Please, let's go on, huh? All right with you, gentlemen? Yeah. Well, if we're all agreed, we'll go on. Although I admit it appears useless without Bombo. Before we go, my men get lion. 
They think lion kill Bombo. That's a fine idea, Tonga. Good luck to you and your men. The superstitious natives could not be pacified after Bombo's death until we allowed them to organize a lion hunt to avenge their lost leader. They donned their helmets made of lion's manes, their spears and shields, and after dancing tribute to their gods, scattered to round up the beasts of prey. Sided over by the dreaded white goddess and the savage tribes under her domination. If I turn my profile, heaven help my nose. <laughs> Fix the gorilla's nose, Greg. All right. I'm afraid you're getting tired of me, Greg, are you? <laughs> That's right, dear. Are you making joke with me, Greg? Well, why do you ask? You seem restless, uneasy. Are you unhappy? Well, of course not, Zita. I've never been happier than in my life. What's going on here? Zita, my dear, you're quite a queen. Someone has to be boss, dear. Greg, Tony's been hurt. It's a bullet wound. And bullet means stranger. Greg, you're angry with me because I've sent for information on that safari. 
That's it, isn't it? No, of course that isn't it. I just want to stay here and meet these people. You know, Zita, it's been a long time since I've seen anybody from the outside. But, Greg, we must be represented at the council meeting. That's more important. It's the only way we can keep the natives in line. And we just can't take any chances on being absent. If that's what'll make you happy, I'll go. I knew you would, darling. Tony, when that safari arrives, we'll handle it our own way, without interference from anybody. And the natives reluctant to move on. Suddenly, out of the underbrush appeared three strangely painted warriors. Looks like we have guests. Colonel, tell Tonga to stand by. What do you want? This is strange. Those natives brought us a message. Three of your party may proceed to my camp, but only three. You'll be guided by the bearer of this note. I promise you safe return. Zeta. Well, I for one am going. Who are the other two? I feel it's my duty to go. Thank you, Colonel. I'm going too, of course. Well, that's impossible, Jean. This may be an ambush. We don't know what we're getting into. Yes, remember, my dear, it was here the last party was attacked and destroyed. It may be a trap. You remain here with Tonga and the natives. They'll guard you until we return. And if we don't come back, they'll get you out safely. I'm quite sure the professor won't mind staying behind with Conga to take back news in case something happens to us. No use. I've made up my mind. I'm going with you. This is no place for monkeys, Polo. Let's get out of here. Oh, you are beautiful, Cedar. Just too beautiful. Shuggy, a woman can never be too beautiful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really think some of the girls are jealous of you. They are? Oh, but they all worship you, of course. They aren't the only ones that worship you. <laughs> Zita, I'm leaving for a meeting of the council as you want me to. But before I go, I want you to promise me something. Yes, Greg? But you'll hold that safari here till I get back. Of course, darling, if you want me to. I do. territory. Everyone in the jungle knows that strangers are not welcome here. We've come to investigate a rumor that a certain safari was attacked near here and all the members of its party were killed except one whom you're holding prisoner. My warriors resent strangers. They are determined to kill all who attempt to invade this country. If I had been informed in time, I might have been able to save the other members of the party you speak of. As for the one member I was able to save, he is no prisoner, but remains here of his own will. In that case, we should be able to see him and hear this from his own lips. Certainly. Come with me. Make yourself comfortable. Well, thank you. You must be tired after this long journey. Wouldn't you like to have some refreshments? Oh, well, thank you. That'd be fine. Shuggy! We have guests. Prepare food and refreshments. Yes, Zita. I was explaining to Miss Preston that it was almost impossible to find Greg Jones in this jungle. But Miss Preston wouldn't be convinced. Not without first making every effort to find out if it's here. So the sole reason for the safari was to find Greg Jones? What other reason could there be? To hunt wild beasts, to explore strange territory, perhaps in search of ivory. Men come into the jungle for all sorts of reasons. That is why, if we wish to remain in peace, 
We must set up barriers against them. I see. Well, I'm afraid we are imposing on you, forcing ourselves in here this way, but you can understand we were concerned about Greg. Of course, Colonel, I understand. I tried to persuade Greg to return or send a message out, but he is very stubborn. <laughs> I know that. And your visit, far from being an intrusion, I expected you and anticipated meeting you, both you and Miss Preston. Really? Oh, I assure you, Greg told me all about you. Really? Really. Well, this is very enjoyable, but uh, after all, my dear, we came here on a definite mission. Yes. When do we see Greg? He's representing me now at the Council of the Chiefs. It's extraordinary how he has managed to impress them in his short stay here. Already they acknowledge his authority and accept his domination. Uh, yes, he's a remarkable boy. And uh, so are you, my dear. Tell me, how did you manage to acquire such a marvelous education here in the jungle? I landed here as a child when the ship on which we were traveling foundered on the coast. My mother taught us children. She was a natural leader, so the others followed her. Now, they follow me. And there are no white men here at all? No white man has ever come into our territory until Greg came. We have often considered to invite desirable white settlers to come here because many of our girls have reached a suitable age to marry. Yes, so I see. Uh, do you mind, my dear? I've been saving for just such an event. Not at all. May I have a few words with you? Alone. You don't think Jean is in any danger? What else can we do? I sent Greg on an important mission, but he'll be back before you leave. Yes, I know. I have no intention of leaving until he does get back. You still think I'm holding him here against his will? Well, it does seem likely, doesn't it? It's what you prefer to believe, naturally. But it isn't true. The fact is that Greg has fallen in love with me, and I'm in love with him. I believe that when I hear him tell it. You don't suppose I'd be foolish enough to tell it if it weren't so, knowing that you're going to see him presently. I could have waited to let him tell you, because I know he will. But I thought it better to settle it, frankly, between ourselves. I don't see that there's anything to settle. But Greg has promised to marry you. And men are stupid when bound by such promises. All I know is that he loves me. And if he were free, he'd marry me. As far as his promise goes, don't think that I'd hold him for one instant. If he really wanted to be free. Do you really mean that? Honestly? Of course I mean it. I'm glad you're inclined to feel so sensible about it. Because I would have had you killed rather than give him up. You see, here in the jungle, such things are very easily managed. And I'm not bound by the conventional laws of society that hamper you. Greg says I'm more than half savage. And maybe I am. All I know is that I'm willing to fight for what I want and won't stop short of anything to get it. And Greg really means that much to you? He really means that much. Don't make any mistake about it. Now that we understand each other, I don't see why we shouldn't be friends. <laughs> why not? This is an outrage. Put me down. I was minding my own business and this bug when I was picked up by these two women. I thought there was going to be trouble, so I got Tonga to leave me here. We avoided the natives all right, but then I found my precious Sozo Dora Telamida, and then these creatures overpowered me. Oh. Take it easy, Professor. Come on, get up. Oh, oh thanks. There you are. Now, what's this all about? I see you worried about Miss Preston. I assure you, she's quite safe. That's why we're here, to make sure. Miss Preston is in my charge. Of course, you became friends, too, during this long trek. You spend hours together. And the lonely nights in the jungle are somehow different than the nights you spend anywhere else. Conventional barriers cease to exist. You come close to one another. <laughs> Well, you seem to know an awful lot about this. I lived here all my life. 
I know all about it. I think you know all about a lot of things. I wish I knew some of them. I'm sure you would. In fact, I don't think there's very much happens in this jungle that you don't know about. Not much. Your safari wasn't out two days when the jungle underground told me you were coming. You know, you seem very friendly. I wonder just how friendly you are. Why not put me to the test? I will. I didn't come out here just to guide Miss Preston. I had an added reason. Concerning the ivory. That's right. And I want you to tell me the name of the leader of your organization. Organization? What do you mean? I think we understand each other. Contraband ivory. You're asking for trouble, Mr. Lambert. The man is a... Killer and a thief, and I came out here to get him. Will you agree to keep me out of it? Not even to mention where you got the information? If I tell you this killer's name? Why not let me tell him? Need I go on, Mr. Lambert? This doesn't make sense to me. It isn't very clear to me either. Gabby! Down, Polo, down. I'm a little surprised, Zeta, that you would dissolve our partnership so abruptly. Oh, yes. I've known about this, Greg, for some time, but I didn't think you'd sell me out for him. Lambert, I tried to stop you from coming here, not once, but several times. I tried to lose you in the jungle. And when little Bamba was about to guide you here, I... I took care of him. Unfortunately for Wayne Monroe, he learned too much for his own good, and now... You've all learned too much. It's too late for anyone to leave. Buddha Omba, Lamberti Ari, Simasani, Ina Kamoba. My warriors will take care of you and your friends, Mr. Lambert. But the ladies remain. Gary! Pacey, Pacey. One of these in 30 years. So are you and your bunkology. Somebody must have stopped my messengers. Obviously, it was our good friend Gabby the cook. Men must work and women must weep. And the sooner it's over, the sooner to sleep.
My dear, since you've lived by the ways of the jungle, I think it's only befitting that you should, shall we say, depart in the same manner. No, no, no. Time and tide wait for no man, my dear. No destiny for any woman. First double wedding ceremonies that has ever taken place in the jungle. Oh, that's why the commissioner came last night. Isn't it wonderful? Wonderful. It is. It is an idiosandra propadora. <laughs> Looks like a spider to me. That ivory's going in the right direction at last. That completes my mission here. I'm leaving my wild jungle out behind me. Wild life! <laughs> you should see one of our nightclubs. <laughs> <laughs> 